Okay, so we're going to work two separate problems today. Um, the first one's going to be this number 39 here, um, and that's going to be our image that we're going to be working with. Um, I kind of drew a little separate thing uh, on the paper that I worked it on. Um, that way we can look at both. Um, and mine's just kind of like a drawing. Um, so we're going to move to that. Um, and so first, uh, the first question asks us, uh, you know, what is the direction of the magnetic field? Okay, so we know that. Um, the magnetic field is due, uh, or the magnetic field due to the wire um, is west, um, so that the current flows north um, in that part of the wire. And so uh, the magnetic field at the point A due to both the top and bottom segment is directly in the page. We can use the right hand rule. So we got my right hand here. I'm going to put my thumb in the towards the north, um, and so we can see that it's going to be going into the page here. Um, and even even here, it's going to be going into the page because uh, A is there. Um, I didn't draw that there, but that is there. Um, okay, so next uh, we are asked to found to find the the total magnetic field, uh, the net net charge of that. Um, so in order to do that, uh, if we first need to find the magnetic field of the wire at A. Um, and to do that, we know that uh, we could form a little triangle over here because we have um, got this and we know that uh, the degree between it is tan uh, 17 degrees um, so just kind of play with that formula and then we're going to get over here tangent of 17 degrees times the magnetic field of the earth is going to give me the magnetic field of the wire um, so that's going to simplify that and um, that's going to give me 6.11 times 10 to the negative 6 tesla um, and then after that we're going to find the magnetic field due to the wire um, which we have that, and then we need to solve for I in this situation, so that's good, what I'm doing here. Um, and so solving for I, you just kind of multiply that out. Um, mu naught over 4 pi is constant. You can find that number in your textbook. Um, that's going to give you I is equal to 0 0.0917 uh, uh, amps. And then from there, uh, we're going to find the B net, which is going to be, you know, the... Um, you're going to add both of them up. You're going to use the, add the magnetic field of the upper and the lower together. Um, so that's what we're doing here. Um, and they are the same, so it's just two times both of them. And we're going to plug in our numbers. Uh, we know that it's two times this uh, mu naught over 4 pi. That's constant. Uh, two times I, which we solved for up there. Plug that in there. Um, and then we have the distance. They give that to us um, over L. Um, I'm sorry, that's over 2. Um, and then go from there, and we're going to plug, type that into your calculator, and then you're going to get 1.63 times 10 to the negative 6. So that's just kind of um, teaching you, you know, how to find the magnetic field. Uh, simplified, um, pretty straightforward. Um, and understand how to use the right-hand rule. Um, and understand, you know, the compass deflection. So, and then from there... Um, we are going to work with number 45. Um, 45, it's given the image here. Um, it's another pretty simple, straightforward. Um, and it asks, is asking us to calculate the magnetic field uh, and the direction of the magnetic field at the common center of the two semicircles. Okay, so we're going to work on that one. Um, so that's going to start there. Um, so we first know that the magnetic field of a loop um, is that top equation, it's uh, mu naught over 4 pi, um, 2 times uh, r squared times i, um, over z squared plus r squared uh, to the 3, three halves. Um, so that's, what, that's just pretty much what we're doing here. Um, and that's pretty straightforward. You can find that in your textbook. It teaches you how to derive that. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, and then so uh, we know that z is equal to 0, so there's that. Um, and that's going to simplify this equation here. Um, and that's going to be the magnetic field of the center. Simplify that, and you're going to get mu naught over 2 is equal to i over r. Um, then you're going to find the magnetic field of the arc. Um, so that's theta over 2 pi times mu naught over 2 times i over r. Um, this theta is going to be pi just because that's what we're measuring. It's not a full 2 pi. It's not a circle. It's just a semicircle. Um, 
and then uh, do that, and then you're going to use the superposition principle and add the B total. Uh, is going to be the semicircle 1 plus semicircle 2. Um, and we found both of those through this. Um, they are actually uh, both the same. Um, so it really is just um, mu naught over 4 uh, times I over R plus mu naught over 4 uh, times I over R2 um, because we do have the different radiuses. Uh, of each semicircle, um, and that's going to simplify and give you this B total, and that is what we're asking for. Um, and I believe that is it. Um, oh, we do know um, that the conventional current is going to be clockwise, um, and the magnetic field due to both sides is going to be into the page. Um, and that's just found by the right-hand rule.